everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus Horus Heresy Primark painting tutorial. Yes, looky, looky, looky. Here he is, the master of the ninth, the great angel himself, Sanguinius, and Sanguinius's diorama base. That's very cool. Now, this is only available from Warhammer World or from Warhammer events, so if you're able to get to a Warhammer event at Warhammer World, or indeed in the States, you should be able to pick up a copy of this, but unfortunately you can't order it from online. This is what you will receive if you order Sanguinius from Forge World. Now, we are gonna be painting both because, well, it's a real spectacle when they're together. And just as a quick aside, I've also been able to do some creative shaving and clipping on this horn so that he can be removed and he still has his hand. So for those of you who own this, you'll know that this horn comes with a hand on it. Not anymore, just clip it off. And then when you're building this guy, just make sure that it aligns. Trust me, it does. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we've got it off his base. This bit of rock as well also comes off, just so you know that I'm not mad. We're gonna be painting that separately. And of course, we're gonna be painting all three of these bits we're going to be doing Sanguinius himself first, and then we're going to be doing his scenic base. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That's the admin out of the way. It's all been primed in grace here, as you can see. And, well, on that note, it's time to grab our paints, grab our brushes, and let's get started. So, here we go. The place we're going to be starting on Sanguinius is on all of his golden armour. This is one of the main details of Sanguinius. And the color we're gonna be using first is Retributor Armor. Now, there's not a lot of science to this bit. It is just a case of getting that Retributor Armor all over all of his armor. Now, if you need help, do just check out the product photography on Forge World website. That should help support you. Now. What we're also going to do is we're going to use this Retributor armor over the top of all of the gems on the armor. So you don't need to worry about avoiding those. And if you want to, you can do all of the weapons and things like that first. Well, do them, do them all now. I'm not going to, though. I'm going to do them later. Firstly, I'm just going to work on the, all of the armor and make sure that that's all done. And then when we get to the weapons, we'll get to the weapons um, rather than doing that all the gold at, the, at this point and then making life difficult for ourselves when we have to do some finer detail work around all those weapons. So, as I said, we are just working on the armor here. And it might take a couple of thin coats. So do just keep an eye on that. Once all that Retributor armor is on, across all of his armor, we'll come back. And so with that Retributor armor applied all over his armor, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna shade it. And the color we're gonna make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And basically what we're going to do is just going to make sure we don't have too much on our brush when we do this because we don't want to turn it completely brown. But what we want to do is we do just want to get this kind of colder, more, well, browny shading onto it than we perhaps typically would with some other gold recipes that we've done. And this is just because initially we want to work from a reasonably cold base before adding the warmth back in rather than starting off with the warmth because you know these are these are primarchs from the era of the horus heresy and everything in the horus heresy is a little bit darker and dingier than maybe in 40k or it's got more of an antique feel so we're just going to be getting this all over and as you can see that's lovely did a really nice job picking out all of those details for us, whilst just giving us the exact right look that we're after. You just want to go over all of the gold like this, and then once that's done, we'll come back. So 
So with that done, you should now have some quite dark armor like this all over. But don't worry, we are now going to return him to his former shiny glory. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Skull Crusher Brass. And what we wanna do here is we basically just wanna now relayer this over the top of any wide open panels. So for example, just here on the leg, we're just gonna paint this Skull Crusher Brass all over, just avoiding where that wildwood has settled in the deepest recesses. Just like that. Now on much of the model, you've got quite tiny little details. So you don't need to worry about kind of doing all the like rivets and things and all of the really tiny little in, in, intricate details. Instead, we're gonna leave those for when we do the edge highlight, which will be coming up next. Instead, what we're doing here is we are just picking out, as I said, those large open panels, like that thigh plate, this area around the teardrop, like so. And we've got the lower leg as well, coming up to around about there. And just bringing it around a little bit more. And we've got the boot as well. So for example, just this bit here. And there. Like this. So you just want to go around like this, picking out all the details that you can, like this. As I said, you really don't need to worry about those tiny details just yet. Those are coming up very shortly. So with that done, you should now have some real shine applied to these wider open panels, as you can see on the legs. But we've got all those extra details to do and this is where he's going to really take a great leap forward on his armor. Now, the color we're going to be making is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Skull Crusher Brass and Stormhost Silver. And what we're going to do is we are now just going to start picking out all of those details as well as edge highlighting everywhere that we've already done. Just like this. Now, this is going to take some time because he's got so many details on his armor. But it's absolutely worth it. So just take your time. Make sure you pick it all out. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that highlight applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more shine to him. I'm gonna add this in the recesses. Now the color we're gonna be making is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part Reitland Flesh Shade Gloss. And what we wanna do is basically just pick out the darkest areas, for example, just in here, and just add this over the top to add a little bit of rosiness in there, but also to add a little bit of a glossy shine. And you could add, just add this all over if you wanted. That's entirely up to you. But this is just gonna make not only those highlights sparkle, but it's also gonna make those recesses sparkle as well. And as I said, this is how we return that warmth back into the model, having initially shaded it with wildwood. So you just wanna go around like this, just picking out these areas. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So with that Reichland Flesh Shade and Contrast Medium mix applied, what we're now gonna do is 
we're going to apply our final highlight, which is going to be some Canoptec alloy. And what we just want to do here is we want to pick out the sharpest points and the corners of the armor. Just like this. We're also going to pick out any gems just to make sure that they're very bright for when we come to finally color them in. So for example, the large heart just here on his chest. Like so. So with that done, the golden armor of Sanguinius is now finished. So what we're gonna do is move on. Now the next color we're gonna be using is Black Templar. I'm gonna be using this for all of the soft joints in his armor, as well as any other details that you wanna be black. So once again, just check out the product photography on the Forge World website, or indeed the box art if you've got some. And for now. Just being really careful around all of that delicious gold, just like this. So with that Black Templar applied, in the end, it was only on the soft details because when looking closely, I can see all of the peturges, all the leather straps and things, they're actually a purple color. So that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna use some shyish purple now. I'm gonna use this, as I said, over the top of all of our leather. This is gonna include his tabard, his peturges, the sword scabbard, and the leather of the pistol holder holster. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde, just on its own at first, and we're going to use this to paint in the Purity Seal, a bit of parchment just here, and his belt. I guess it would be an Oath of Moment or Oath Paper, because it is the Horus Heresy after all. Like so. And what we're also going to do is going to use this skeleton horde to paint in his hair. Now, we're also going to put this over the top of the laurel in the hair, because that is going to ultimately contribute to the final effect. Just take your time here, making sure you get right in there. This is very detailed, very textured hair. You don't want to accidentally miss a spot. So with that done, what we now want to do is we want to make a roughly two parts apothecary white to one part skeleton horde mix. I'm going to paint this all over the pelt. both inside and out. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna get our first coat on the wings. And the color we're going to be making is a roughly six parts contrast medium to four parts apothecary white to one part shyish purple. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting this all over those wings. Now I'm going to start here on the back. And you want to be very careful here that you don't have too much on your brush like I just did there. And basically, we're just going to start painting this all over like this. Just moving that paint around. Now don't worry if it looks a little weird it's going to look much better in just a minute once it no longer looks purple. 
But when I look at the box art and product photography, these wings definitely have a sort of purplish tinge to them. So we're just going to get this all over, both inside and out. And as you can see, I'm not looking for a really dark build-up. I'm effectively looking to just stain it this nice purple colour. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're just going to very quickly take some Creed Camo. I'm going to use this on the laurel around his head. You can see it's quite a subtle green effect. In amongst the hair. But that's exactly what we want. So with that done, what we then do is we take a tiny amount of Gilman flesh. I'm going to paint this over his face. Just want to be very careful now. You just want to keep that paint moving. This is a Forge World face, so it's very detailed. And you don't want to gum any of it up with too much paint. Get to do the ear as well. And his neck. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is gonna take some thin down iron hand steel. I'm gonna use this to paint in all of our silver details. So now this is gonna include areas like the blade on the spear of Telesto. the gun at his hip, as well as these little chain rosaries down here, little beads. Just like this. And so with that done, it's now time to colour in those remaining gold details. Now this is all those areas that we've left, so like that bit on the spear here and here and back there, the ends of the peturges, the various little kind of decorative features on the scabbard and the sword hilt and pommel and all those areas that we haven't done yet. And well, we are once again going to return to Retributor Armour. So just pick a place to start, Now I'm going to start just here on the, on the spear and we're just going to coat this all over. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on, on Sanguinius, believe it or not, as you can see, there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shades. Now the first one we're going to add is Griff Charger Grey. I'm going to be adding this to the spear blade. Now if you've built the one with the sword, you also want to add this to the sword. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Basilicanum Grey. We're going to use this to shade our other silver details, so the gun and those beads.
And our final shade is going to be Gilliman Flesh. It's going to be on all our remaining gold details. So with those shades all applied, Sanguinius is now at what I would call <laughs> a war hipster battle ready. However, we're definitely not leaving him there. What we are now going to do is take him to the next level by adding some highlights. Now the first one I'm going to add is Pallid Witch Fesh, and this is going to be a dry brush. And we're going to be doing this over the top of the wings. Now I want this to be a reasonably heavy dry brush, but we don't want to be like super smeary with it. So just Build it up to a point where you're happy with it. It might even be that you just do quite a gentle dry brush and you're reasonably happy there. But this bit really is kind of up to personal taste. As you can see, that pallid witch flesh has already lifted those wings right up from that purpley white mix we added before and they're so beautifully textured these wings that it's perfect for dry brushing now you could if you wanted to line highlight all of this but the reason we're dry brushing is because we want them to have kind of a bit more of an organic feel to them because they are wings we want them to be appear nice and feathery that's exactly what dry brushing gives us as you can see there already that wing looks Absolutely stunning next to that one. So you just want to go across both sides of each wing. Like this, just making sure you catch all of the edges before moving on. And of course, as I say, you can build it up again if you like from this point onwards. So with that pallid witch flesh applied to both sides of the wings, what we're now going to do is going to apply one final dry brush. This is going to be some white scar. And basically what we want to do is we want to keep this towards the ends of our largest feathers. Going around like that with the white scar. You see? Same again. So with that done, the wings are now finished. So what we're going to do now is going to highlight all of our leather details using some Sanesh Grey. So with all of those leather details done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Screaming Skull and we're going to use this to highlight the hair picking out all the strands like so and then we're also going to use this to highlight the pelt but we're not going to highlight the face with it Face we're going to highlight with something else. So with that done, what we're now going to do is, don't worry if it looks a little bit stark, because we are now going to be covering over it, and we're going to be doing the leopard spots. So the colour that we're going to be using is Wildwood to do this. And basically what we want to do, starting around here, is we want to just start drawing some tiny little marks
just like this, all the way around the outside. of the fur. Like this, like that sort of thing. And then similarly, on the wide open areas, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of do some kind of much bigger ones, but the fundamentally it's the same thing. So what you wanna do is you wanna just kind of pick up a little area. I'm gonna do one right here, where you do like kind of a squiggly semicircle. And then you add a little squiggly dot in the middle. And then you just kind of alternate around like that. Adding little spots here and there. Now just take your time. around it like this. So with that done, all over the pelt, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna work on the face. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Black Templar here. And what we wanna do is we wanna add lots of tiny little dots of it over the top of its head. Slightly tricky angle here. like that, and then we're going to add a few around the cheeks, like so, we do the same thing on the other side. And then what we're also going to do with the Black Templar is we're going to use this to colour in the eyes as well as to add a line coming out to the nose which we're then also going to paint in with the Black Templar. So I've added a little bit more Black Templar to the sort of gums area around a cat's mouth. And I've also added a few little extra markings on the head, but you don't have to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to then nail take some Volupus Pink. And we're going to paint this over the remaining little flap of gum just there. And just under there as well. Like that. And then we're also just going to paint in the inside of the mouth. And the tongue. So with that done, what we then do is we take a tiny amount of Screaming Skull. We use this to highlight the teeth.
And with that done, we then take a little bit of pallid witch flesh and we use this to highlight the fur. And with that done, the final thing to do on this leopard skin is to take a little bit of yeary or yellow and paint this. Into the far corner of each eye. Eyeball, I should say. I take it back, there is one last thing to do, which is to take a little bit of black Templar and to paint in the cat's pupil. Like so. So with that pelt all done, it's now time to work on his face. And the colour that we're going to use first is Flayed One Flesh. And what we're basically going to do here is we're just going to start picking out all of his raised details. So areas such as his nose, his cheeks, and his cheekbones. His furrowed brow, his lips, his chin, and then next up, we want to take a tiny amount of black Templar and we want to use this to fill in his eyes. And then with that Black Templar filled in, we want to take a teensy, teensy, tiny amount of Screaming Skull. We want to add a little dot on the side of his eyeball. Like that. So with his eyes done, what we then want to do is take a really diddy amount of Nasdrag yellow, not very much at all. And we just want to add this under the eyelid. Going up into the hair. Like that. Just a very small amount. So with that, the face is now finished, but to finish off the head, what we need to do is take a little bit of deep kin flesh and just use this to highlight the leaves of the laurel. So with that, the face is now done and well, all that's left to do are the metallics. Now, the first place we're going to work on is on all the silver, particularly focusing on the spear. Now, the colour we're going to be using first for this is Iron Hand Steel. And it is a highlight, but it's also a relayer. So, for example, on the top part of the Spear of Telesto, we just want to do a really wide relayering of that blade, just ignoring where our Griff Charger Grey is really settled, like that make that top part look nice and sharp similarly on this side as well
just like that. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use this iron hand steel to just highlight this edge and this edge as well as just to continue that highlight down to there and then around there like that. And of course we're going to do the same thing on the other side as well. Whereas for the pistol, we do just want to add some little edge highlights. And then next up, what we're going to do is on this main part of the spear haft here, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thins down Rune Lord brass, and we're going to use that as a top sides highlight slash layer. Like so. And we're also just going to pull that down onto the haft itself. But again, we're not going to do the underside because we want it to kind of fall into shadow, as it were. And so, with that done, just whilst we wait for that to dry. What we're going to do is we're going to take some Stormhost Silver. I'm going to use this to highlight the cutting, killing edges of the Spear of Telesto. As well as just this little sharp bit here. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to use this to highlight all our remaining gold details. So with that done, it is now time to colour in all of the gems, and there are a lot. <laughs> so, the colour we're going to be using is Blood Angels Red. And basically, what we just want to do, because we've highlighted them all up with the same kind of bright gold, is you just want to paint this Blood Angels Red over the top, which is going to give them a nice kind of shiny sheen. Just like that. So just make your way around. Very steadily. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna take a little bit of Black Templar I'm going to use this to paint in the eyes on these gems on his chest. So what we want to do is we just want to draw a kind of oval slit going right down the middle of each of them. And so with that done, what we're now going to do on the slightly smaller gems is we're going to take some Gorgon to fur and use this to add a little bit of shade and into them. So, for example, on these teardrop ones, you just want to add this Gorgon to fur towards the top. And 
just leaving that red at the bottom. Like so. And what we can also do is around these large ones on the chest, just add this gold grunt of fur around the edges, like so. So with that gold grunt of fur applied, what we're then going to do is going to take a tiny amount of Fire Dragon Bright. Let me use this to highlight all the gems. So just adding a little bit of it. towards the bottom of each one, not any of the circular ones, just around the right hand side of it. So with that, Sanguinius himself is now finished and he looks absolutely amazing. The greatest Primark that ever lived. <laughs> Of course. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to his base. Now, we're going to do this base first, and then this would be effectively where you would, after this bit, uh, where you would stop if you have the uh, Forge World version. Uh, but then once he's done, we'll then move on to the scenic base as well, just as a little extra treat for all of you. So, what we're going to do first is we are going to paint in this lava effect that it has on the box art, which is kind of around here at the front. And... We're starting with this because we want to blend it into the, the, the dark of the dark of the earth. So, the colour that we're going to be using first are Yandan Yellow and Blood Angels Red. And what we want to do is we want to load up our brush with the Yandan Yellow first, just like this. And then we want to basically map out where we want this. So, it's going to start around here, like this. It's going to come down to there. Like that. Then we're going to bring it over this rock as well. Over the skull. And then we're going to bring it out around there. Like that. Just going to widen this out a little bit. Then what we do is we wash the brush, and whilst it's still wet, we grab some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to add this over the top. Like that. Towards the bottom. I'm going to wash the brush. Grab a little bit more Blood Angels Red. I'm going to add some just there like that. Put in a little bit more there. Then what we do is we wash the brush one more time and grab some and Yellow. And we're just going to add that back in. Like so. So with that done, it's still drying at the moment, but don't worry about that, because what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to this kind of sculpted rock. So we've got this large one here, this one here, this bit, and the column. Now these are going to be a kind of blasted black. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take some pterodon turquoise, and we're going to paint this over the top of these rocks. Just like this.
So with that Terradon turquoise applied, again, it's still drying at the moment, but don't worry about that. What we're gonna do is now paint in the soil with some Basilicanum Grey. Like this. And then when we get towards the lava, basically what we wanna do is we wanna just add this around the edges of it. So we're creating a sort of red blended effect. As you can see just there, so you got this kind of transition in a way. And then when we do our next coat after that, you'll really see it come to life. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a roughly two to one mix of contrast medium and black Templar. And we're going to be painting this all over the Basilicanum Grey and the Pterodon Turquoise. Now what we want to do here with the Basilicanum Grey is we just want to add it up to where that black and the red, well, grey and the red start to interact. So you'll see you get this kind of fade through into the brightest parts of that red, just like this. And of course, over the top of the pterodon turquoise, we just want to add this all over. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Agaros Dunes and we'll use this on this skull just here. And so with that done, it's now time to add some highlights. And the first one we're going to add is Rust Grey. And this is going to be a dry brush over the top of all of our sculpted rock that we did with the pterodon turquoise first. And so with that rust grey dry brush applied, what we then do is we take a very small, very gentle dry brush of blue horror and we add this very gently over the top of the sharpest points around where that rock is broken. So with that done, just to finish it off, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Tyrant Skull. I'm going to use this to dry brush all of the soil and also just over the top of some of that lava as well. And the skull. So with that done, Sanguinius himself is pretty much finished. There's only a couple of things left to do, such as that negative space there on the base and the rim of the base itself. And we're not gonna be doing that now because we're gonna to have to be doing that on the scenic base as well. So we're gonna pop Sanguinius to one side for now. See you later. And now 
gonna pick up this bad boy. Yes, look at that hunk of resin. Now, as I say, this bit does detach. This is so that you can fit him in. And it does sit in there nice and snug, there like that. So it doesn't need to be magnetized or anything. And of course, if you want to magnetize it, you can. But um, yeah, this is a display level piece. So with all of that aside, what we're now gonna do is grab our paints and brushes once again, and we're gonna get started. So once again, the place we're gonna start on this base is with all of the fire. Now, what we wanna do is we basically wanna do the same thing that we did on Sanguinius, but we wanna do it around each of where these chaotic things are erupting from the ground. So we're taking this yand and yellow, and we're just gonna around here, around the base of the of the pole or stick or whatever we're gonna call that. We're gonna add some yand and yellow like this. And then we're gonna grab a little bit of Blood Angels Red and add that over the top. Towards the bottom again. Wash the brush. And grab a little bit more of the yand and yellow. And just add that in. Like that. And then we're just going to go around. I'm going to do this for each of them. And again, as I say, just where the things meet the ground. So for example, just here. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take that Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to apply this to all of the kind of under rock. Like this, and then once again, just overlapping with those fiery bits. We are just going to avoid any of these kind of top big rocks once again. So anywhere that looks like it was once manufactured. And so with that Basilicanum Grey applied, then we're going to once again take some Terralon Turquoise. I'm going to use this to paint in the remaining rocks. And so with that done, we are of course now going to do exactly the same thing as we did on Sanguinius' base. We're going to make a two to one mix of contrast medium and black templar. And we're going to be start painting this all over our Basilicanum Grey and our Pterodon Turquoise. And so with that done, we're then going to once again use some Agaros dunes to paint in our skulls. So with that done, just before we do all of those dry brushes, we've got a few more details to paint, as you can probably tell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on all of this horrible chaos nonsense. And the colour we're going to be using here is Balthazar Gold. We just want to get a good, even coat of this all over these details.
And so with that done, as you can probably tell, I've also painted in the kind of ornate parts of the shoulder pad, the kind of groin plate here, and the plates of armor on the back with the Balthazar gold. And this is gonna be important for later. Well, not too much later, because what we're gonna be doing now is gonna be taking some Griffhound Orange. We're gonna be using this to paint all of the open areas of the demon. So it's gonna be areas like his, his stomach, Like so. And he's got this sort of open wound there. It doesn't matter that we're overlapping it a little bit. That's absolutely fine. You don't need to tidy that up either. It's just going to help for the final effect later on. That's everywhere on the front. We've also got this rune here on the head. Like so. And then on the back. Quite a few significant areas. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some dark earth flesh. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the skin of the demon. And this might seem a little bit strange, but don't worry. It'll make sense very shortly. So with that dark earth flesh applied all over his skin, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Magos purple. We're basically going to go over it. So what we want to do is we just want to start painting this Magos purple all over. Just like this. So with that done, whilst we're still waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey and we're going to use this to shade all of our Balthazar Gold. Like that. And of course, we'll do the other side, but what we're also going to do is we're going to shade all of the armor on our demon. So, all of that Balthazar gold included, as well as paint over the top of the flats of the armor panels. Like so. And then similarly, we're also going to paint in all of the horns and bony extrusions around the demon. So we've got these large ones on his head. There's plenty of them all around. And as a matter of this overlaps a little bit with the flesh. So 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to do our final kind of darkening it down of the demon. And the colour that we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part shayish purple mix. And effectively what we want to do here is we just want to pick out areas such as the deepest recesses around the folds of all the skin and around the kind of veins and all that kind of thing and just start adding it in. So for example, just down here on this leg, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this Shayish purple mix coming up around like this. Add it just there as well. Like that. And I'm gonna bring it down inside the leg, like that. I'm gonna cover over that part of the leg. Whereas this part of the leg, we're actually just gonna leave. But then around the feet, we're gonna add this in. We'll add a little bit of it coming down around like this. Like so. And if you don't, if you get it somewhere that you don't want it, what you can do is you just clean your brush off and just mop up some of that and smooth it out like so to create these interesting little things. So, for example, down here on the tail, what we're going to do is going to add this shayish purple coming down to around about there, like that. Wash the brush and then just kind of smooth out that transition like that. It's subtle, but it's effective. And you can build this up. You can do a couple of different layers of this, or you can do one layer of this, or indeed, if you're happy with it the way it is, you could do no layers of this. This is just gonna add that extra level of inflammation to the demon. make it look extra cool. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some black Templar. I'm gonna use this over the top of all of our Basilicanum gray horns, just to make them nice and dark. And so with that Black Templar applied, what we're now going to do is going to take some blood for the blood god. I'm going to paint this into the deepest parts of all of those innards. So for example, on the tummy just there, I'm just going to stipple this in. Just like that until we're happy. Reasonably happy with that. Similarly, just around all of those cracks in the skin. So that blood for the blood god applied. What we then want to do is take a teeny tiny amount of gorse blaster green and paint this over the demon's eyeballs. Just like that. So with that done, we're very nearly finished with base coats. We've just got two little details left to do, and that's the helmet just there, and the shoulder pad just there. Now you could paint these in any legion colors, but I'm gonna paint them in the colors of the blood angels to represent blood angel casualties at Cygnus Prime. So the color I'm using first is blood angels red. I'm just gonna get this all over the armor.
just like this. And so with that done, I'm then going to take some Retributor armor and paint this all over the trim and the face guard. As well as the studs on the shoulder pad. And with that done, we're then going to take some Dark Oath flesh. I'm going to paint this over the entire bits of armor. So we're going to paint it over the gold and the red to give it that really authentic, slightly darker Blood Angels of the Horus Heresy look. So with that done, it is now time to brighten that model right back up. It's fully shaded, it's fully base coated, so it's time to get those highlights on. And well, it's just a series of dry brushes you'll be pleased to hear. Now the first one is gonna be Tyrant Skull. We're gonna be doing this over all of our darker black on the rocks. So for example, just under here. Like this. Just like we did on Sanguinius's base as well. So with that Tyrant Skull applied, what we're then going to do is going to dry brush all of our Balthazar gold areas with some Rune Lord Brass. Now this doesn't have to be perfect at all. You can actually leave a fair bit of it if you want to. Just very gently skim it over to give it a little bit of shine, just so it catches the eye a little bit. As we do want this to be quite dark. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some rust gray. I'm gonna use this to dry brush all of our masonry. Just like we did with Sanguinius. What we're also going to do with the brush grey is dry brush the demon's horns. And so with that rust grey applied, we're then going to once again take some blue horror. Just dry brush this very gently over the most prominent parts. Like this. And similarly, over the top of our demon's horns as well. And so with that done, all that's left to do is a very, very gentle dry brush of Kislev flesh around the demon on his skin. So with that done, Sanguinius is finished. And I think you'll agree, it looks awesome. <laughs> I love this damn Primark so much. Right, all that's left to do is the negative space on each of the bases. So if we just pull that bit out there and then just 
gently remove him as well. We don't need to do this bit in here because you're never going to see that ever again. And well, if you glue him in, if you don't glue him in, you will see it, but you're never going to play with this. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be using some Morden Earth just on this negative space around here because well, I've added the same Black Templar and Basilicanum Greys we've been going around. So I just want to add this Morden Earth like this, just to these negative spaces. There's not a lot, to be fair. We're going to do this on Sanguineous as well. And then once it's dry, I'm going to dry brush it with Tyrant Skull, and then we're going to paint the rim of the base black. And he's finished. And on that note, we'll end there. And I'll see you in the roundup in just a second. And so, here he is. The finished Primarch Sanguinius. Master of the Ninth Legion. Master of my heart. <laughs> He's my favourite. He's absolutely my favourite Primarch. I could go on and on, but I probably shouldn't because, you know, I don't want the outro to be longer than the actual painting video, which it definitely would be if I get started. Really, really breathtaking piece of kit. And that scenic base from Warhammer World is just absolutely makes it amazing. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.